it's Rachel from Cheslin.com and I'm here today to show you how to make the windable key that I made however many years ago. It's posted on my blog, it's a photo tutorial, but I figured I could make a video tutorial, hopefully in time for Halloween. My dog is running around back and forth while I'm filming, so you'll probably hear him clacking around on the floor. I was hoping that I could make this video and it would be easier for some people to follow rather than just looking at the photos and trying to decipher what I was doing. When I first made this key, I just ran to the dollar store and went to their toy section and they had an assortment of windable toys. But this time, when I was trying to find the materials to make this key, I could not find wind-up toys anywhere. They were non-existent. I tried pretty much every dollar store that was in my vicinity. I tried the drug stores. I started looking at thrift stores. I figured that now they were obsolete toys that weren't being sold anymore because I couldn't find them anywhere. One of the first stores that I went to that actually did have wind-up toys was Party City. My husband and I were searching everywhere, down every aisle for them, and then finally I was like, look, we're gonna split up, we'll cover more ground that way, and almost immediately after we split up, guess who found some freaking wind-up toys? <sighs> of course. This is the one that he found, one of these chattering teeth guys, and it was great because they were only a dollar. I got home and I immediately started taking it apart to see if it was even usable for this, and it's not. When you start taking all the parts out, the little turny knob thing that turns into the key, it spins way too fast. The thing would be flying if you tried to use one of these for the key. I recommend not using this type of wind-up toy. Yesterday, as I was driving down one street, there was a Toys R Us in front of me. Toys R Us, they sell toys there. Maybe they have wind-up toys. I just like walked around the whole store looking. I could not find any. My dog and cat are like trying to play right now while I'm doing this stuff. You can probably hear them. I found the wind-up like area, which was awesome. And I ended up getting two, just in case. They were kind of more on the pricey side. They were like $4 each, which I guess if it's just one component of your Halloween costume, that's not too that's not too bad. I picked two different ones, hoping that if one had me a mechanism inside that I couldn't use, then I could use the other one. I got this little dude who dances, and I got this little dude who shuffles around. So hopefully you guys will be able to find these toys. It was way harder than I anticipated, but thankfully I found them. All right, let's make this thing. Here's what you'll need. Foam core board, a hot glue gun, paint, your wind-up toy, an elastic belt. This is what we will be securing the key to. A piece of matching fabric. I'm using black fleece. A piece of dowel. I'm using a piece of bamboo because I had it and it has a hole already. If you're just using normal dowel, you're going to have to very carefully drill a small hole on one end to fit the little wind-up toys knob. I cut mine to be about 5 inches. An X-Acto knife or, in my case, a box cutter because I couldn't find my X-Acto knife knife. Alright, I've chosen which one I'm going to sacrifice for this project. There's a seam running around the whole toy. Depending on what kind of toy it is, you might be able to just pop it open very carefully with an X-Acto knife. However, the guy that I got has two screws that I just simply unscrewed. That was the only thing holding him together, so it came apart very easily. Alright, there we go. We got what we need. So you see here when I crank it, it has this little thing that spins around and I need to take that off or else it's just going to get in the way. So I take some pliers and simply just pull off the plastic part. Easy enough. For this particular toy, I could just pull that little metal rod out and the wind-up mechanism still works. You might want to be careful if you get a different kind of toy. It might mess up the innards of the mechanism. You might want to just cut it off rather than pulling it out like
like I did. I'm very lucky that this one still worked. In my first tutorial, I removed the grip for the wind-up knob. So you would just take the pliers and crimp it around the grip and it'll eventually break off. But for me, I kept it because it was the perfect size to fit into my bamboo piece. So I didn't feel the need to take that grip off. All right, now here's what you do with the belt. Fold it in half and mark the halfway point on the inside. And then you're going to open it and fold it again. Uh, hot dog style, I think is what they call it. And then you're going to mark the center point that way. So now you know exactly where to put the hole to feed the wind-up toy through. What we're going to do is feed the knob through the hole that we cut. And then we're going to sandwich the belt between the mechanism and the dowel so that it secures it in place. Make sure to cut a tiny hole because since this is elastic, it's going to stretch out and you don't want a gigantic hole where the mechanism will just flop through. So first, we're going to need to make sure that the wind-up mechanism doesn't move around while it's in its little pouch. Just put a tiny dab of hot glue. Make sure it's not touching the movable part of the wind-up mechanism and hold it down. Now that we've got it on, we have to secure it into the belt. Make sure that the stretch of the fabric matches the direction that the belt stretches. So it depends on the size of your belt, but mine was two and a half inches tall. So I cut a piece of fabric to be two and a half by three inches. You can hot glue if you want, or you can sew it closed. I'm choosing to sew it closed. And there we are. Now, you're going to take your foam core board and draw out a little key pattern. I traced around the rim of a glass, like you can see here, and then I just kind of freehanded the rest of it. I decided to be a little cutesy and added a little heart to this, and it actually kind of looks like a skeleton face one way, which I liked. And here you can see I didn't account for how to connect the dowel. You'll need to cut a small rectangle out from the bottom that is wide enough to fit the dowel. I put it up about three-fourths of an inch. I ended up having to move the little heart shape up a little bit to put enough of the dowel into the key to secure it. Here's my first try of trying to cut this thing out. I try to go fast and that's never a good thing when you're trying to cut foam core board with a blade. It's blurry but I'm trying to show you right here that the foam in the middle catches and if you don't have a blade that's sharp enough and you're going too fast it will ball up on the inside and leave a really ugly edge. I was more patient this time, so it worked. You'll want to sand the edges to make them nice and neat. There you can see the little rectangle that I cut to fit the dowel. I actually ended up cutting it a little bit wider than I needed to. It was maybe an eighth of an inch wider, so thankfully the hot glue covered that up. In my photo tutorial, I suggested using this two-part epoxy because I said something about how it's stronger and people are going to be playing with the key all night and you don't want it to break. However, I have since tested it out with a high temperature hot glue and that works just as fine. Apply the hot glue in the little rectangle area that you're going to stick the dowel in. And then hold it in place while the glue dries. You're going to want to check it from the side, like this. You can see that I had it completely not centered. So you're going to have to make sure it's centered, like that. See the gap? I'm just going to use hot glue to seal it up right there. It still looks like a gap, but once the glue is dried and I paint it, it'll cover that up. Now for paint. I wanted to paint it gold. As I was setting up for this project, I realized I only had an antique copper color and I barely had any. What I did was I painted two coats of black paint, kind of as a primer, and I was hoping that if I didn't have enough copper paint, hopefully maybe having the black base coat would give it a little bit of an antique weathered kind of look, so that ended up working out pretty well. And I suggest to use craft paint. Do not use spray paint. Because the chemicals in the spray paint react with the foam inside the board and it disintegrates it and your careful cutting and sanding will just be destroyed. Now all we gotta do is glue it in. You can see I kind of overfilled it a little bit 
you should try not to because when you push it all the way down onto the knob, it could potentially glue itself to the belt, which is not good because then when you twist the key, all the belt fabric will start twisting as well. So you're going to need to carefully put it on, make sure that you don't get the glue onto the belt. If you do, just very carefully snip around the base of the key and hopefully you'll cut any glued on threads loose. And there we go, it's finished. Now all you gotta do is throw on your costume and get cranking. I'm wearing it with a corset top. I threaded the belt through the corset back so that the belt was on the inside and I could just fasten that first and then fully put on my corset top. You can also just wear it on the outside of your costume and my dog. Why not? Okay guys, that's it. I hope this was easy to follow. This is my first like tutorial video. I've never really done this before. It's kind of weird to sit here and talk to a camera. Um, I'm probably putting all kinds of weird inflections in my voice because I feel really awkward. But if you enjoyed this video and you want me to make more, please leave a like or subscribe, maybe? Should I continue making these kind of videos? Do you guys have any suggestions on any tutorials you'd want to see? Maybe past stuff I've done before or just other things floating around in the crafting ether? You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, trying to think about what I should say at the end of this thing. I'm kind of just rambling now, so yeah.